Hello, this is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome to the Bestiary for Upper Bionis, covering enemies and unique monsters found in the High Entia Tomb, Aerith Sea, and, spoilers, Alchemoth. I'll be showing them in level order, first enemies, and then unique monsters, with short strategies for beating them outside of overleveling. The first area I'm starting with is the High Entia Tomb. Alright, now for the two unique monsters here. Calm and Zabi, found in the second treasury room. Like the Hover Astus, it can cause paralysis, confusion, and cast physical protect to prevent a small certain amount of damage. Oddly enough, it's got high physical defense for only its right side, so try not to hit from that position if you're using physical attacks. The other is Furious Josen. It's in the Telethia Laboratory, but you'll need the High Entia Emblem Key item in order to access it. The quests needed are in Satoral Marsh, involving the Imperial Ceremony. See the quests video for more info. Regardless, this high-level Telethia can cast Soul Read, so you'll need Shulker Melia to bypass it. Predation is a, ser is a dangerous art that can topple anyone around it, so either keep your distance or equip for topple resistance. It is a powerful attack otherwise, so be careful anyway. It is completely resistant to break and topple as well. Next up is Alchemoth. This is spoilers, but the place becomes a haven for Telethia after the Mechanus core events in the story, and skip travel within is completely disabled. There are no unique monsters.
finally, Aerith C, the main attraction to this video. I'll see you again when the unique monsters come up.
And dusted. Ricky can win by himself. This should be easy. Ready, steady, steady. All right, the first is Turbulent Belmo, found at Hovering Reef 1 and only during clear or shooting stars weather. It's essentially a more powerful helm. It can inflict poison with two of its attacks, as well as can cast Awakening to briefly make itself higher level. Either equip for debuff resistance or focus on toppling it. It's got high resistance to break, though. Flabbergasted Jerome is a purple nebula found on the island below Hovering Reef 5. As it's a nebula, it's best to use an ether focused party, as its physical defense is incredibly high. It also cannot appear during rain. It's got a counter spike for ether defense down and can inflict sleep. By itself, it's really not too dangerous, just equip some debuff resistance so attacks won't hit as hard. Next is Peeling Kerchus. It is found at Hovering Reef 7, and like the previous Unique, is part of a challenge quest. It's got an instant kill attack against toppled party members, 
but as it doesn't have topple itself, it relies on the surrounding Chromars and other enemies to do that job. You should absolutely be whittling down other enemies in the area first, as a result. Proper Bandaz is next, found at the secluded island, only during night with shooting stars weather. Ah, it likes pretty sights, does it? This is part of a challenge quest regardless. By itself, it isn't really a threat. It can topple and cast agility down on you, but that's about it. Hard Bash is its most powerful attack, though, so brace yourself for that. Tempestuous Adigia is found at Hovering Reef 10 and is needed for a challenge quest. It only appears at night. This Leia only has two arts, one with topple, so if you can take it on by itself, you should be pretty good. Subterranean Zomar is found at Sultnar Seal Island. This one is a bit dangerous because he has minions standing with him, as well as Chromars on the other side of the bridge that can easily join in the battle if you're not careful. So my suggestion, get rid of the Chromars past the bridge first. That way you'll only have three enemies at a time to deal with. Also do not topple him, he's got a spike dealing 800 damage each time. It can add up quickly. Cumulus Denamos is at the Katoro Seal Island, flying around. As such, you can easily encounter it while fighting other enemies if your timing is off. He can cause poison, paralysis, and topple, and is immune to break and topple himself. I just recommend to fight him by himself, just time yourself to take down enemies in the way first. Funeral Gazra is next, found at the Hode Refuge. It's required to beat for the Punish the Hodes quests, and is surrounded by a bunch of other Hodes. Just be careful here. He can topple with a powerful attack, and can hit around him four times with big spin. Lightspeed Sonnet is found at the Anu Shore, required for Challenge Quest 4. It can cast Haze, it damage immunity, and cause bleed, and has a counter spike dealing 400 damage every time. I recommend using Shulk to disable its spike consistently, but it can be toppled, especially with chain attacks. Stormy Belgon is an infamous unique at Chromar Coast. It's normally not much anything special, it's got some buddies to help it out that I recommend taking down, but the big thing about this is that it has a counter spike with guaranteed sleep. You will need to equip your party with debuff resistance to make this much less of a pain to deal with. You can also use this unique to grind up affinity slowly but easily. Just equip your character with debuff resistance, only, and then just keep waking up your other party members from their sleep to gain affinity. Bizarre Ragalel is next, found at the lower part of In Anu Shore. It's got paralysis and topple abilities, as well as stealing HP. There's not really much I can say about this other than it's got a chance to inflict critical hits, so be careful for times when it may do way more damage than you expect. Sacred Zagami is found beneath Hovering Reef 9 amidst other twos. The big thing to, with this is that all of its arts have a large damage multiplier, so you may need to stack up defense or rely on Donato Arm. It can also reduce max HP with its talent art, and has both physical and ether defense on its sides and rear. It might be best to play as Reiner Gunban, keep aggro, and just deal as much damage as you can since it'll be facing you regardless. Clamorous Dablon is found at the Sleeping Dragon Isle on the northwest coast, only during a thunderstorm. Since this island is far from a landmark, I recommend placing a save down here to minimize backtracking if you fail. It's got Daze, Chill, and Blaze, so be careful with its arts. You might have to watch for Lunar or Soul Red East also around the shoreline, so be careful. The 
final one is Deadly Medorlo, found at the Central Seal Island only after the Mechanus Core events when other Telethia are flying around. It can be faced by itself, it's got Topple, Lock On, and Soul Reed, so Shulk Formelia is recommended. There's not much else to this, so I'll sign off on this for now. Stay safe, happy, and healthy, and I'll see you on the next video.